Alrighty, third time's a charm. This is Larry here with the Farmstead Way. And like I said, this is the third time I've tried to make this video because the first time I started the video and I flubbed up my words, I started over. And the second time I had to stop because I had to go help out my wife with my daughter who was being crazy. <laughs> Fun times on the farm. And don't make me do it a fourth time because there's crazy dogs everywhere. No, go lay down. Anyway, so today I wanted to read you a poem by Rudyard, how you say his name? Rudyard Kipling, he is the author of the, uh, the Jungle Book. If you've never read the book, The Jungle Book, you are missing out. It is a very, very good story and is a lot deeper than anything Disney ever did with it, so... So let's just get right into it. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can make, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet triumph with and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you've given your life to, broken and stoop down and build them out with worn out tools, if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breed a word of your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve you long after they are gone and hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can walk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. Neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fix the unforgiving moment with 60 seconds worth of distance run, the earth is yours, or yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Jeez, you could do 20 videos on, you could do a video on each stanza of that poem. And there's so many virtues in this poem that people in today and age could really do some good by applying in their own life. Uh, this talks about leadership. It talks about gossip. It just talks about being a good man. I mean, some of my favorite lines in this is, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. This is such an important concept that a lot of men need to get because this is about pride and courage and being a good leader, detachment. Because you'll be in a situation when everyone's freaking out, they're panicking, they've lost their reason, their logic. And if you're in charge, they might just look at you and say it's all your fault. My father-in-law just got home. They'll look at you and they'll blame you up and down and say, why'd you do this? And as men, it's really easy for us to get defensive and be like, well, I don't know why you see it that way, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes when people are freaking out, when you're in charge, you have to look at every single side of the argument and make allowance for their doubting too to see if you're actually in the wrong. Put your pride aside. If you can dream and not make dreams your masters and think and not make thoughts your aim, this has to do with ambitions, dreams, and goals, and hard work. There's so many people that will go after a pipe dream or not have the work ethic to make something happen. And they make an idol or a goal. They make a goal or a dream their idol and it never happens. They think about it and they think about it and they put pictures on their walls of what they wanna do, but when they have to put their feet to the pavement and actually work for what they're wanting to accomplish, they don't. 
and they tend to drag their entire, entire family down to achieve that goal. Lay down, go lay down. Dogs. <laughs> I've seen this happen. I watched a guy do this and he's willing and he's been willing to risk the well-being of his entire family to chase after a goal that's not gonna happen because he's not doing what he needs to do to make it work. If you can meet, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat the two imposters the same, you know, this is dealing with the ups and downs in life. Um, at the end, we have total victory in Christ in the end. But when we go through life, you're going to have ups and downs, triumphs and victories. And you got to realize that each one of those are just temporary. Because if you focus too much on the negatives, you'll think that everything's negative and you become a pessimist. And if you only ever think of the positives, you will be broken when something goes wrong. And you need to have the nerve and you need to have the guts to be able to deal with triumph and victory and realize that there's always going to be another challenge and there's always going to be another sunrise. And this will build your fortitude in dealing with both. If you can watch the things you've given your life to broken and stoop and build them up and build them back up with worn out tools if you can make one heap of all your win. That's the next stanza. Or watch the things you gave your life to broken and be able to stoop down more. So that's about fortitude. You can put your entire life savings, this comes, you know, this really applies to business, dreams, being able to put your heart and soul into whatever you're doing and watch it destroyed and be like, well, I'm gonna stoop down and build them up with worn out tools. And uh, just not give up. Just not give up. Yeah, that's you can use this and jump over to the next thing and never breathe a word of your loss. Because people love to do that. They love to publicize when they get broken, when they get beaten, when they get torn down and they get on Facebook and they like to throw pity parties. And they love the attention that comes from defeat. They do. Because then everyone gets on there and strokes their egos and tells them, oh, it's okay. These sweat flies are driving me insane. There's nothing wrong with asking for help or asking for prayer. But there's too many times that people go through hard times and they want to breathe about every ounce of their loss they go through and not be a man about it <clears throat> and fix what the problem is. If you can walk with crowds and keep your virtue, <clears throat> or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither friends nor loving, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count you, but with none too much, you know this is something that happens to a lot of people when they get into a lot of money, or if they have certain virtues and then they get into a mixed crowd and they lose all touch of who they are <clears throat> or what they stand for. You should be able, and then sometimes you have to stay away from certain crowds of certain people because you become who you're around. And sometimes you can be a really good person. You could, you know, if you're trying to stay away from certain temptations and you get around a certain group of people and they will poison your mind and you'll become the exact same thing you hate. If you can walk with the crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. This happens to a lot of rich folk, you know, and that's why they say it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven because money does something to people. It makes you lose the common touch. It makes you not appreciate the everyday things in life. It makes you just look for that next dopamine hit and that next purchase. And unfortunately, that that's what everyone thinks the American dream is. You know, the excitement of buying your new first car and you're 18 years old and you somehow finagle your way into a loan so you can get a sports car so you can drive to your high school and look really cool and yet you can't appreciate the beauty of a sunshine, the, the complexity and the, I don't know, 
warm heartedness that a meal can bring you of good company of good friends you just want crap you want stuff and you lose the common touch and lastly if you can fill the unforgiving minute minute with 60 seconds worth of distant run yours is the earth and everything that is in it and which is more you'll be a man my son this kind of goes back to the american motto life liberty and the pursuit of happiness equality of opportunity not equality of outcome And say that, you know, people get on the whole gender, not, well, gender and race inequality. Sure, that exists. Are you going to let that get in your way? Are you going to let that unforgiving moment where someone discriminates against you because you're black, because you're a woman, stop you? Or are you going to fill that unforgiving moment with 60 seconds of giving it everything you got and not letting outside influences stop you from chasing your goals and dreams? Yes, America's got a really bad history of sexism and racism. But what's common to all man, black, white, male, and female, is grit, determination, stamina, 60 seconds of giving it everything you got when everything is against you. <laughs> You know, you just think of people like Booker T. Washington. And he had to, he, he did so much for the African-American community and the Tuskegee University. And he gave it everything he got. And he worked hard. Even though everyone was against him. Even though the white man was trying to put him down. He said, I don't care. I'm going to work hard and retrieve my dreams. If you look at people like Amelia Earhart. Everyone was against her because she was a woman. But she said, the heck with you all. I'm going to give it everything I got. And look at everything that she's accomplished. And all other people. It's just America is a land of multiple races. And the, it's a nation full of challenges for everybody. Give it 60 seconds of everything you've got. And you'd be surprised what you can get. And don't let the world get in your way. Because then... The earth and everything that's in it will be yours. And you'll be a man. Because you have to have grit, determination to get anywhere in life. So don't give up. Don't let the ifs get into your mind. The what ifs. The only ifs. The maybe ifs. Just Give it that 60 seconds, 60 seconds of everything you got. You'll be, a prey. You'll be amazed what you can accomplish. All right. As per usual, stumbled over my words, but wanted to make a good video on that poem because it means so much to me. I want to give a shout out to Blue Ridge Piper, uh, Justin Schaefer. I'll put a link to his channel in the comments below. He's doing some really cool stuff over there. And if you really like this type of content, I would highly recommend going over there and checking them out so i'm gonna get to work and do some chores around here on the farmstead and you all have a good day